Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday meditation gathering. I'm so glad you're all here to share this time together. This week, we have Kenny Mamarella de Cruz, who will lead us in meditation, and then we have 20 minutes of silence. After that, we're going to open it up for sharing, and we end at 10.45. Over to you, Kenny. Thank you, and thank you so much for having me back. Um, and I have chosen uh, what was an absolute game changer for me soon after discovering Course in Miracles, an absolute game changer. And after I read it through and we, we lead the meditation, uh, I might tell you a little personal story about how, how, how this changed things, deep realizations. So here's one of my all time favorites, lesson five, I am never upset for the reason I think. This idea, like the preceding one, can be used with any person, situation, or event you think is causing you pain. Apply it specifically to whatever you believe is the cause of your upset, using the description of the feeling in whatever term seems accurate to you. The upset may seem to be fear, worry, depression, anxiety, anger, hatred, jealousy, or any number of forms, all of which will be perceived as different. This is not true. However, until you learn that form does not matter, each form becomes a proper subject for the exercises for the day. Applying the same idea to each of them separately is the first step in ultimately recognizing they are all the same. When using the idea for today for a specific perceived cause of an upset in any form, use both the name of the form in which you see the upset and the cause which you ascribe to it. For example, I am not angry at blank for the reason I think. I am not afraid of blank for the reason I think. But again, this should not be substituted for practice periods in which you first search your mind for sources of upset in which you believe and forms of upset which you think result. In these exercises, more than in the preceding ones, you may find it hard to be indiscriminate and to avoid giving greater weight to some subjects than to others. It might help to precede the exercises with the statement, there are no small upsets. They are all equally disturbing to my peace of mind. There are no small upsets they are all equally disturbing to my peace of mind. Then examine your mind for whatever is distressing you, regardless of how much or how little you think it is doing so. You may also find yourself less willing to apply today's idea to some perceived sources of upset than to others. If this occurs, Think first of this. I cannot keep this form of upset and let the others go. For the purposes of these exercises, then I will regard them all as the same. I cannot keep this form of upset and let the others go. For the purposes of these exercises, then I will regard them all as the same. 
then search your mind for more, no more than a minute or so and try to identify a number of different forms of upset that are disturbing you, regardless of the relative importance you may give them. Apply the idea for today to each of them using the name of both the source of the upset as you perceive it and of the feeling as you experience it. Further examples are, I am not worried about blank for the reason I think. I am not depressed about blank for the reason I think. Three or four times during the day is enough.
open your eyes slowly and come back into the room. We have 20 minutes left for sharing your questions and your comments. If you'd like to speak, raise your hand or you can use the reactions button at the bottom of the screen and I'll invite you to take yourself off of mute. If you'd like to ask Kenny a question or a comment of confidentiality, put your message in the chat function at the bottom of the screen and I'll read it out. would like to share. Lottie, take yourself off mute. <clears throat> Thank you very much for that. I hadn't ever gone into that particular lesson at such depth before. Um, but what was stunning to me was the recognition that not only is the reason made up by my mind, but also the upset. The whole thing is a made up job. Thank you. Thank you. I think um, my biggest addiction in my life was my thoughts to try and control and understand my feelings. Um, and as soon as I realized that these are things I'm making up, meanwhile, I am having feelings, feelings are with me and feelings are passing, then I could stop making up these stories to justify and to pretend to be in control. It was a real game changer for me there. Thank you, Lottie. Norman, take yourself off of mute. Yes, <clears throat> thank you very much, Kenny. That was a lovely reminder uh, for me. I must admit, when I, like, most like all the rest of us, when I read it, I didn't understand it at the time, but I accepted it as being true. But I practiced, but it didn't make much difference. But now that I have advanced so much, the lesson it had for me was just be aware of how powerful that my mind is because if I think ill of anybody the chances are in my mind they will get ill if I think good of anybody in my mind they will get good if I think the world's a bad place in my mind it will be a bad place and, and if I think it's a nice, happy place, in my mind it will be. And that has brought home to me just to be very, very careful. Even the slightest wee inclination to be annoyed or cross with anybody, to get, let it go completely and change it into something nice. And, and that will happen. And thank you very much for reminding me of that. I love that it put that you put it that way because i can hear in your voice a gentle creative love um and yeah here's here's the power the gentle power to create goodness to come from love rather than the fear thank you so much Who would like to share? It's at the tip of my tongue, so I'll tell you my little story. Um, Saturday, the 29th, is my 50th anniversary of landing in, um, in the UK as a refugee. Um, and it's a miracle we got out alive because the Secret Service were after us. We went into hiding, we left my father there. Um, and every year, in October, I would have a horrible time. I'd be full of anxiety, upset, I'd be spooked, I'd be freaked. And my mind would put it into whatever stories I made up. Something happening in school, something happening at work. I'm poor, I'm fat, I'm stupid. Um, it's the weather changing, surely it's the weather, it's sad. Uh, and then when I lived abroad, when I lived in Sydney, when I lived in Fiji, 
uh, the same thing happened. It's like, I, and I wasn't even poor or fat, or I could change my mind or my relationship to my go-to places of self-loathing. And I just thought, I'm over these places. I'm over these justifications. And I followed the feeling back. I got into the feeling beyond the thinking. I followed the feeling back. And the places that took me went deeper and deeper. And I realized it was reliving unconsciously the stuff that I was never safe enough to feel. And for me, as I could feel it, I could heal it and I could include it rather than it banging on my door saying, you know, to quote Engelbert Humperdinck, please release me, let me go. Um, and what a relief to be able to retrieve this and to be here and now and to get the gift to put this love into action I guess to know what it was that was triggering me and this is something that I use in my work every day is okay there is a feeling there might be thoughts around it but breathe into the feeling and feel the feeling and follow the feeling back and generally split seconds so-called scene of the crime or back to where the pause button was depressed saying here's your gold shadow beyond this dark shadow we're waiting here for you to, to meet um, and thank god i found that volume button and it's not like i want to push things away there's there's gold in all of it but what a relief to meet myself there and to be here with you and to sit and up for me i've never been at such depth with this lesson as i have with you today but to sit with you and feel it and to feel into other things that might be making me feel angry, upset, jealous, etc. And to just bring them love, the power of being together and sitting with this. It's phenomenal. Thank you so much. We'd like to share. Alison, would you like to share? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Kenny, for that. Thank you. I, I've had the most dramatic um, meditation just now for um, a strange reason. Um, and I don't quite know what to make of it yet, but um, the doorbell went just um, um, five minutes into it. And um, I thought, oh, I'm not expecting anyone or a parcel or anything. So I left it. But then the doorbell rang again. And then this person hang hammered on the door. And then hammered and hammered and hammered and I was <laughs> I thought I, I just have to go and I'm 50 50 stairs up in this house and I ran down the stairs <laughs> having first tried to yell out the window at them to see who they were but they didn't hear me so I ran down the stairs and it turned out that it was a um, possibly a homeless person who was looking for the citizens advice bureau and I have the same number um as the Citizens Advice Bureau in the next street. And this happens quite a lot for a reason I don't really understand, but this poor person was standing there looking quite upset and anguished and with me arriving at the door saying, I'm on a Zoom call. <laughs> and then of course I ended up realizing what was going on and um, I apologized for my sort of um, exasperation and said, I'm very sorry, but yes, it's round the corner and it's just a short way away. and. Uh, and I just really wondered what this is all about in connection with this lesson, which I, I, I suspect I need to, to work on more than I perhaps have in the past um, in order to, um, to understand that lesson more fully. But it was a very dramatic um, interruption to, to proceedings, which I think means a lot, and I'm yet to, to process that. But I just wanted to, to, to share the, the strange um, um, thing that happened to me. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so pleased you spoke that out. Um, I think that was one of my game changes is rather than having it with everything else going on there file in, in my in tray, as I speak things out, they're here, they exist, they're in the world. Um, and let's see where they want to go. Thank you. And thanks to the guy at the door too. What a gift. <laughs> <laughs> John, take yourself off of mute. Um, 
Oh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kenny. That was fantastic. I just wanted to say to Alison, I think that homeless person was guided. He knew where the real citizens of Vice Bureau was living. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so that was a lovely story. Thank you for sharing it. Yeah, Kenny, I, I love that because, I mean, one of the things I love about the course is it reminds me of a, a line which some of you who are familiar with 12-step groups says, you know, it works if you work it, so work it, you're worth it. Uh, and so that, that lesson was a massive one for me as well. You know, I kept working it, working it, working it, and it works. And and it is so true. And the other thing I loved was the, how you described your, you know, your personal story there. I had, the same, I had the same experience. I was taught by a very, very respected person that I respect on my journey. And he said, when you get triggered, when you get triggered, maybe it's a help just to say, when was the first or worst time I felt this feeling? And he said, immediately, because you're asking spirit, immediately, You'll get a picture, you'll get a memory coming. And for me, whenever I got that moment of clarity, woof, the upset went. You know, and it happens, of course, that's what relationships are for, isn't it? That's, that's the great <laughs> thing about them, you know. So I'd, I'd, I'd experience something in the same, I'd go, whoosh, I'm back in love with Addy again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going from wanting to tear her head off, I'm back in love with her. So that's a very uh, out, of, out of, and that's the other thing I find, you know, whenever my emotion is out of proportion to the event, that's always my signal, you know, that I need to look back. So I really appreciated that. I hadn't shared, but I've had the most amazing uh, experience to to use that lesson this week because we had a house up for sale and everything had gone through last, everything was down, you know, contracts were ready to exchange, all the documents all in place. And the, and the, the guy pulled out at the last minute, at the very last minute. So, so I had all sorts of those possibilities coming up. <laughs> and it was interesting to observe because first of all, I had the, I had the lawyers say to me, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my God, this must be terrible. And I'm saying, that's not, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Everything's okay. And then I had the other side solicitor say, Oh, I'm so sorry, my client withdrew. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Everything's all right. I'll be okay. We'll be okay. And um, and I just thought, I could never have done that without having done this work. You yeah. know? Mm. Never have done that. I'd have been so tearing my hair out. What's going to happen? Now? No, peace. I can choose peace instead of this. But that lesson is one of my all-time favorites. I love it. So thank you for sharing it with such depth and meaning. It's beautiful to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was, I guess, the other big change, game changer for me. Acceptance, where I feel that I was programmed. I don't know whether it was me or testosterone or family or, you know, men, boys like to fix. Maybe fear fantasize and fix rather than accept what is and respond. But yeah. And you know what? The bit that I went, ooh, when I read that lesson, the first, well, probably the first dozen or so times is the last line. Three or four times a day during the day is enough. It's what? Three or four times? I've got a <laughs> backlog. Don't hold me back. But, you know, to break that addiction and to kind of, have choice with it all while being okay. And it's okay, I can see you here. Now I'll give you attention. And it's to find that balance rather than to go on some sort of a spiritual course in miracles rampage. <laughs> Vivian, take yourself off of mute. I was just wondering for Alison, what emotion was produced in her with the man at the door? Um, and um, she said it was dramatic and she did what she felt she had to do, but it was interesting. Yes, I would like to just put to her um, what emotion particularly was brought up about that.
Well, I've yet, I've yet to process it, Vivian, but I, I think in the first place, I was utterly exasperated because I, I find it quite hard to set aside time to for the for the course, as you probably know, and um, um, I, I have not done many of these meditations recently and enjoyed one last week and thought I'd do it again. And um, so my first um, thought was, oh, no, I can't believe it. So just 45 minutes of a Wednesday morning and there's no peace. <laughs> something's, something's disturbing it to, to stop me doing the course, essentially. Um, so that's what I felt was exasperation that I couldn't find the. Um, but however, the the uh, meeting on the doorstep in the end went quite well. I mean, I opened the door with a sort of flourish. But um, um, when I saw this poor, poor young woman there, um, I immediately felt as I knew what was going it was going to be about. And I felt um, chastened by the my exasperation and uh, and out of it rather and um felt there was a message here for me somewhere and um um i've managed to calm down about it although having said that the meditation wasn't all that successful today because of the enormous um, upheaval within it so um i think exasperation is what i was feeling just that i can't seem to spend enough time on this wonderful course um but it'll change and develop over the day because i'm sure i'll think about this a lot more Thank you. Rona, would you like to speak? Take yourself off of mute. Yeah, thanks. Hi, I'm Rona. Yeah, sorry, I don't often share her. I have my video on. I get in back, I get um self-conscious about it being on YouTube. So that's that's how come I don't. But um I um I always really appreciate so what's shared in this space. And um yeah, I relate to what's been shared around the kind of um difficulty with, with getting here, to be honest. Even now I go to my regular Course in Miracles group, I feel you know, there's a, I think there's some kind of story of like, oh, I've put you all on a pedestal or you're all further ahead than me. Or <laughs> There's something there's something going on anyway. <laughs> so, um, or too far ahead of me or, yeah, I don't know, some sh shame, shame, that's what there is. Um, yeah, and thanks, Kenny. Um, thanks for, so much for that. It was exactly what I needed, actually. Um, yeah, I keep getting really, just really caught up in other people. Yeah, again, getting, getting triggered, really, to be honest. And then the story that, you know, if I was if I was enough, they'd be different. And I really loved what was shared around that. Um, yeah, when was the first and worst time? I felt that I've, I've heard that before, but I haven't heard it for a long time. So that that's really helped me too. And love what you shared about October. And yeah, it just makes me think about that sort of those, that sort of somatic somatic memory and kind of um, surrender surrender really. Um, and I guess yeah, I'm an astrology geek as well as a Course in Miracles student. And yeah, aware that there's this big eclipse going on, a big release and mm. Yeah, I just wanna, I just wanna come back to this. Yeah, that I could choose peace instead, and um, yeah, that I've made this all up, and just coming, come, coming back to coming back to the truth of God. Um, and that, that meditation was very powerful for me. I really, yeah, I went right straight in. So, um, yeah, just very grateful for this space. To be honest, thanks. Thank you. When the eclipses and the mighty moons and things come up, and it's like whoosh, here we go. It's this part of the roller coaster. And it's like, I wonder what's going to emerge now that I had no access to that needs to be cleared up from the dark shadow to open up my gold shadow, to be more here and now, to be more available to life, to love um, and to fear. And I remember pretty much the first words that I spoke when I was first asked to lead a meditation here was about my imposter syndrome and fearing that you're all going to find me out and I'm an imposter and you're so much further along the course and you're going to ask me a trick question. I won't even understand the big words, leave alone. <laughs> Again, what a relief to speak it out and to just, you know, do you feel like you, you're here more now um, and taking your space, Rona? Yeah, I do, I do. Yeah, I do, I do. Of course, of course, because honesty, you know, just honesty cuts through all that mm. BS, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. One of the lines that we use in the men's group, so that I use with my words, is we name it rather than shame it or blame it. And the blame is all the stories that I feel we talked about, or that this today's lesson is about, is because of this and that. And I'm a victim because, and this is the story behind, and you know, all that helpless stuff. But to just name it, deal breaker, 
free. Thank you. Okay, we've come to the top of our meditation gathering. Take yourself off of mute and show your appreciation to Kenny. Oh, thank, thank, you. You. Thank, thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank